we did an analysis where we looked at about 48 carriers around the world. We looked at the economics and we looked at some ratios. Uh, we looked at OPEX divided by revenue and it was trending up, which is not a good sign, right? We also looked at profitability divided by revenue and it was trending down, right? And that was over a five year period. So that first thing that it told me is that the wait and see is not an acceptable option because it's not a sustainable EBITDA type margin, right? But then we looked further and said, what are the new services that potentially could be in there? And the first part is IoT has the potential and excitement to be uh, that new service opportunity. But the concern that we had and what we found out from this report was that connectivity shouldn't be the only option with that, right? Because if you look at that, you have the potential to be worse off in three to five years from now, just based on that, right? So the whole premise around it is to say, what technology could I use, whether it's NFE or whatever, to be able to enable more profitable services, develop them quicker, simpler, but more importantly, then be able to have either some type of platform or umbrella to offer your customers to add these value-added services like security, automation, optimization, and those pieces. So that was really the foundation of the analysis there. So Orange is also a big service provider worldwide. <laughs> uh, so at the time being, we serve maybe, maybe 10 million uh, connected devices with our network. So that's not a big part of our network because we serve maybe more than 200 million customers worldwide. So the connected objects that, that don't pollute our network at the time being. Uh, in uh, Orange 2020 strategy, we identified IoT as a key, uh, uh, key topic market and we target uh, 600 million uh, euro revenues by 2018. That's quite a good figure and uh, we, we believe that will increase uh, with the advent of the 5G that we expect by, uh, to start with by uh, 2020 with the Euro event. Uh, and, for, uh, on, and for 5G, it's clear uh, that NFV, SDN, big data analytics will be the key enablers. So, uh, so that's uh, our position at the time being. But, we... uh, but now, just now, uh, we, so we launched some IoT services. Um, we don't wait the, um, the 5G standards to be finished to launch some services. For example, we, in France, there are some, some markets on LoRa uh, sensors. So we, 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 we launched uh, a network in France. So we covered, uh, I think at the time being, covered uh, 18 uh, urban areas. Uh, and we, we, we want to target, uh, I think, 120 by the end of uh, January next year. And uh, as an example, we signed a partnership with Vinci. I don't know if you know Vinci, the big company, uh, and uh, to cover motorway service area. So they will put sensors in the, um, in, in the area and we will be able to collect the, the data to better optimize the maintenance for this uh, service area. That's just an example of what we are doing and we are working with uh, various actors on, uh, on IoT. And to some of the points that Ray and Eric made, the, so the Verizon brand, we've been, we've been monetizing our infrastructure for a long time. And we have this idea of you know, letting partners come to us and charge them for transport, charge them to use our highways. And that was very profitable. And our, we have over 1,300 ecosystem partners that demonstrate that this was a good business idea, but as things have progressed and uh, you know technologies are you know like IoT are coming to light, we realize that um, it's not enough. That in order for us to be responsibly profitable, we needed to move up the stack. That it's about the application, it's about the platform. So uh, that said, we're not moving away from monetizing the network. So one of the things we've done, uh, we've launched uh, recently in the US a IoT enablement platform that we're calling ThingSpace. And the, the, the reason of its existence is to accelerate IoT development and go to market for the masses. We are, it's offered as a service and you can start from devices. We want to be sensor agnostic. We want to be network agnostic, but use some of the building blocks like, that we have, like security, like hosting on our cloud assets 
and you know and we're thinking of leveraging technologies like nfv as building blocks because i made this comment to eric that if we were to shut down one of these networks tomorrow <laughs> what would happen if we don't have nfv in place to help us intelligently manage that load um, so that's uh, that's my comment and because i need to compete with uh, eric um, <laughs> we have uh he said they have 10 million connected devices. We have almost 18 million connected devices. And uh, his goal of revenue of 2020, we hit, I think, uh, Q2 this year at $455 million from IoT. So there you go. But we're friends. Yes. So we're getting into minds bigger than yours so, this early on, are we? So okay. maybe, maybe I'll take a more neutral approach. Um, <laughs> One thing that I think is interesting about these services is, although the network may not be stressed right now, as we know from experience, it's very hard to predict when a very popular need or application suddenly arises. And that's where you get into the question of, how can I very quickly spin up an application on the resources that I do have deployed that are going to be multi-purpose? And that's, I think, where you ask the question about NFV. What does that bring? It gives you the agility to be able to respond when you have a, a surprise demand for something you didn't predict. There are a lot of ways that you can actually address the IoT market. And you don't have to do NFV, obviously. They've been doing this for years without it. Um, but just because something's possible doesn't necessarily make it preferred. And so I think it's really what is the best way to deploy things in an unpredictable market where you don't know what the application of the moment is going to be. And even though a lot of IoT is uh, more enterprise, which is a little bit more predictable, you still do have consumer use cases, which as we all know, are very unpredictable. Right, so IoT is not something new. We've been talking about it for a while now. Uh, it was a buzzword some years ago, and then it sort of died down and it's come back again. Uh, and we've been doing, as an industry, we've been doing IoT, supporting the IoT need in many ways in various vertical industries. So I think that's what's been happening. In the past, the addressing IoT was based on individual markets, segments, and building customized platforms for that. Um, the problem with doing that is that uh, the IoT margins are very low. The, the amount of revenue you get from each of these uh, sessions is very low. Uh, so you need a lot of that to make up for the investment you put in there. And if you customize your solution to a special market, now you have an even smaller pie to work with. And I think uh, that is perhaps one of the reasons IoT didn't really pick up because the, the incentive for investment was not there. Yes, for some specialized solutions, specialized um, uh, markets, it was, uh, we've been doing it for a while. And I think at this stage, uh, why we think NFV is an enabler is really with these new technologies, SDA and NFV, we're able to introduce some very distinct capabilities into uh, the networks, into the carrier networks, into the service provider networks, which allow us now to build common platforms which you can use to address these different vertical markets. So I think that's where the economics will start to work, that now I can use a common infrastructure and amortize it across all of these markets, but then build a specialization on top where you need it. And where you typically, if you go down to the bottom, the kinds of things you need are pretty much the same. You need to connect to particular devices, you need to collect the data from there, and you need to send it off to some other place. It's not a whole lot you have to do in the IoT things, as far as the network goes. But what is special is the kind of, it, how you package the information, where you, uh, the kind of timing you need to send things at, and that's application specific. So the customization really should happen at the policy and application level, and we should be able to use the common virtualization infrastructure, the network control infrastructure to support that. So that's why I think this is a turning point that we will now really see IoT being monetized. Um, I mean, that's, perhaps, uh, you know, my point of view. Ray, did you want to say something? Yeah, why did you put the two ball hair guys next to each other? <laughs> I'm being I've not got guy. much. Everybody else yeah. has got a lot. Well, no. No, anyway, no I, I think uh, it's, uh, it's an important point, and I'd love to hear the, 
the, uh, the CSPs, um, you know, we, we have this term in ACG called vertical systems integration, right? And, and the whole idea is that when you have an area where there's a potential of your value is based on economies of scale, right? Then that becomes a tough value proposition, but one way to accommodate for that is to create these vertical focus solutions, right? Because in those vertical focus solution, not everybody's in that market, right? And that's where you could develop an end-to-end -end solution and be able to add value because you're not competing with everyone on the number of devices. I take it then we can all agree that Everybody needs an all, all. Everybody involved needs an IoT strategy. Um, that they need to leverage their existing infrastructure assets as much as they possibly can, and that they need to optimise the employees they have and re-enthuse and retrain them to be able to do this. Just a quick one-word answer each or thereabouts. Is that the way things are going? And and do you see this becoming a feasible, workable reality? in a sort of almost semi-cooperative way within the next 12, 12 months, 18 months. Then what do you think? Where are we? I think it's a journey, obviously. I mean, we've been doing it before, as Pradeep said, and now it's, we're surging back again. But I do think that there is some symbiotic relationship between having a common platform and being able to do rapid customization in a more software-based environment that gives better economics and better responsiveness, easier prototyping. So 12 to 18 months, I wouldn't want to say that we're going to be at the 50 billion devices that have been predicted, <laughs> but I Changes would say that it becomes much easier to capitalize and much easier to make money and much easier to manage and deal with an unpredictable environment. Okay. David. Agree. And um, in 30 seconds, platforms will democratize IoT. And at the end of the day, when we're, do when we're looking at this in, and you know, HD video, it's like the VHS of today. Um, the, the, comp the shop that will win is who has the most meaningful data that delivers the right business insight to the right person at the right time. Customers, that's what they're thinking about. They're not thinking about the infrastructure, coverage, NFV, SDN, modules, 5G. No. Will IoT deliver the most meaningful data insight. And the company that gets to give more yeses will win. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, no, I mean, I think um, it's a journey, right? It's a, it's a journey and there isn't one direct answer to it, but the fact that we're having this conversation and I'm, I'm impressed that the carriers are actually talking more than connectivity from that point of view, because that was the concern that I had initially at looking at this report that these value added services are going to be required and having a platform that allows you to do innovation is where you're going forward. So uh, I think it's, uh, I'm actually impressed we're going in the right direction there. Thank you. Eric. Uh, so we started the NAV journey with uh, deploying some NAV services for uh, enterprise market, for example. Uh, and we believe we should become a software company. And as an example, we want to train, I think, 20,000 people within the company to be able to code. I think it's a good sign to say we want to, uh, to transform ourselves to be able to answer to, uh, to the market and especially the IoT. Thank you. Prodi. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's, a, that's a good good goal. I mean, that's the first time I've heard uh, yes. an explicit goal, but uh, I won't predict what happens in 18 months. But uh, the short answer is, I think everybody now gets it. All the service providers understand that this is what they have to do, make transformations in various areas. Some are ahead, some are planning well, like Orange. <laughs> uh, but uh, they're all on that same journey. They're all on that same path. Some are waiting for others to do it, but I, I don't think it's a question of should we do it. It's, it's a when. 